I just got through watching a one-hour video by Tex Mars ripping apart the book of Esther. And I have to say, I felt pretty disgusted and sick to my stomach listening to that garbage for an hour. Esther is not a biblical book. And many of the early church fathers refused, refused to count Esther as one of the books of the Bible. The book of Esther never once mentions God. But this story of Esther, and that's what it really is. It's a novel. It's a fiction novel. Esther was actually secretly married to Mordecai. She was able to kill anybody that the Jews wanted to kill. Anyone they wanted to kill, they were able to. Well, she had a license to kill. All the Jews had a license to kill. The treachery and the bloody behavior of the Jews is, is wicked. Oh, yes, Esther. Oh, she's a great queen. She's a murderous monster. Now, let me just say, I'm not pro-Zionist. This isn't a pro-Zionist position. My allegiance is to the Word of God and to Jesus Christ alone. I don't think there's automatic salvation because you're a Jew or any other religion or anything else. If, if you don't profess Jesus Christ by grace through faith alone, you're not saved. So this position that I'm taking is simply defending the canon of Scripture and the Word of God. Now, Mars says that the classical Christian interpretation of the book of Esther is a Zionist and Judaizer interpretation. Okay, those are his exact words. I'm going to post links to the articles and to the videos in the description of this sermon so you can look this up and verify it for yourself. And the whole premise of his attack on the book of Esther is that he believes that he has been given secret, hidden wisdom and the correct interpretation of the book of Esther that all of us other poor, poor Christians uh, have gotten wrong throughout the ages. And he goes so far as saying that Esther was secretly married to Mordecai, and which is just an outrageous claim. And he mocks Esther throughout this video and in his articles, and he calls her, and this is an exact quote, a murderous monster. This is what he says about the heroine of the book of Esther, the queen of Persia, who had come to that position to save her people, God's people, from utter extinction, annihilation, and genocide. Okay, That's what the book of Esther is really about. And I'll go so far as saying that Tex Mars' interpretation of the book of Esther is utterly satanic. And because this is this is why Satanists and occultists will flip flop things. Okay, they'll call good evil and evil good. Now I'm not saying that Tex Mars is a Satanist. Um, I don't know. I don't know him. Okay, and he might even be a Christian for all I know. I haven't looked into his testimony of, of what he believes as far as salvation. But it puts a serious red flag in my mind when someone outright denies the the correct interpretation of an entire book of the Bible, and he actually denies that the book of Esther is biblical. And I'll, and I'll give you, I'll show you that. Now, what Satanists do is reverse things, right? So what, what he does, in this instance, it's satanic, what he does is he says that Mordecai and Esther are the villains of the book of Esther, and that Haman, who was the antagonist and the wicked unbeliever and the, the enemy of God's people in the book of Esther is actually the victim of the story. So he completely reverses it, calls Esther, you know, um, someone who is scheming and trying to exact vengeance on, on the Gentiles. And he really takes an anti-Jewish, it's Jew hatred is what it comes down to. And he'll claim that it's not. He'll claim that he's just anti-Zionist, but his level of anti-Zionism has bled over into actually being a, an, an extreme hatred of the Jews to the point where he denies an entire book of the Bible. Okay, that's a serious thing to do. Okay, and that's why I'm making this video. It's, it's serious. Okay, you can't do that. He goes on to cast doubt on the book of Esther by saying that even Martin Luther 
didn't want to include the book of Esther in the canon. Well, I don't care what Martin Luther thought as far as the book of Esther either. Okay, Martin, the Protestants killed a lot of Christians, by the way, a lot of Baptists, um, Anabaptists during that time. He also says that God is not directly mentioned at all in the book of Esther. Well, the name God might not be mentioned in the book, but God is certainly in the book of Esther, and God is certainly glorified in the book of Esther. So I've wrote, I have a Bible verse here, and I'll, and I'll show you. Because the, the, the actual message of the book of Esther is that Queen Esther, who'd become queen of Persia, was going to rescue her people after the nation humbled themselves before God and called for a fast. So we see that fasting is a godly thing, and it's promoted in the book of Esther. Esther chapter 4, starting at verse 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, this is Mordecai speaking to Esther, pleading with her to rescue her people from the hands of Haman. He says, if, all, if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. Okay, so he says, even if you don't help, God is still going to deliver the Jews because they were God's people at that time. And then he continues, but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? So he's saying, look, God is going to rescue his people no matter what. But you have an opportunity to step up and to take part in God's redemption of his people and, and deliverance of his people, physical redemption and, and deliverance for his people at that time. Um, and he says, who knows if maybe God had put you in this position to deliver them and you need to step up and do this. But further, okay, I want you to understand that it wasn't just physical deliverance because if the Jews had been destroyed and genocide had taken place, where would the Messiah come from? Okay, Jesus was going to come from the line of Judah, from the nation of Israel, from the Jews. Okay, you have to remember that without the Jews, there would be no Jesus. There would be no salvation. So anti-Jewish, um, and not, not talking about the false religion of Judaism, okay, which is wicked. I'm talking about biblical you know, the God's people, the Jews at the time were God's people and the Messiah, Jesus, was going to come forth. So this really is a story of God's providence and deliverance of his people so that the Jews would not be utterly annihilated and that Jesus himself could come forth. And so Esther answers him and she says in verse 15, Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go. Gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. If I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Now, who were they fasting to? Obviously, this is a fast to the Lord God of Israel, which is the God of the Bible. So God is right here in the book of Esther. Okay, um, you don't have to directly, you know, say it from to be there. This is the book of Esther is a part of the Bible and to deny it is utter and dangerous error. Okay. Um, so the purpose of the book of Esther was to show that when God's people humbled themselves and sought him in prayer and in fasting, that they would even be delivered from complete and utter annihilation. And again, if, if Esther had not interceded, then, you know, it would have, it would have mattered in terms of Jesus being born. But Mars has secret supposed secret knowledge which is gnosticism that's what gnosticism is is hidden secret knowledge this is an exact quote by morris he says god has shown me the little known prophecies that are revealed in esther okay so god has shown tex mars the true interpretation and all of us have it wrong you know because we actually believe what the word of god says and don't turn esther into a villain 
like Mars does. So Mars completely reverses the story. And um, here are some quotes by Tex Mars. Here's a quote. He says, Haman is concerned because the Jews are haughty and refuse to fit in with the Persian culture. He's saying, hey, he's, okay, ridiculous. Haman is also angered by Esther's cousin, Mordecai. Mordecai looks down on Haman. Mordecai thinks he's racially superior to Haman. Okay, so Tex Mars is pulling out the race card here, okay? And he's saying that the behavior of Mordecai uh, was racially motivated against the Gentiles. It's actually the exact opposite. Okay, so again, he's flip-flopping this. There's nothing in the book of Esther that indicates that Mordecai or Esther were racist. And that's, that's literally what Tex Mars claims. We see the real answer is in Esther 3 starting at verse 2, and it says, And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman. For the king had so commanded concerning him, but Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. So basically this guy, Haman, wanted everyone to bow down every time he walked into the room or walked into the town, into the streets. Okay, and Mordecai, being a God-fearing man, said, no, I'm not going to bow down to this wicked, unbelieving Haman and, as though I'm worshiping him. Okay, so that was the right thing to do. Mordecai was a hero of the faith. We see in Exodus 23, talking about having no other gods before me is what the Bible says. It says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me. So it says, don't bow down to idols. Haman wanted to be a living idol, and Mordecai said, nope, I'm not going to do it. Okay, but Mars, Tex Mars, has a different take. He, he has hidden secret knowledge about the book of Esther. Here's what he says. Haman persuades King Ahasuerus that the Jews being hostile and untrustworthy and hating everyone but their own race should be put to death. Again, he pulls out the racial card, says Mordecai's real reason was that he hated the everyone who wasn't a Jew. Utter nonsense. It's not what the Bible teaches. Okay, so Mars is twisting and changing the word of God and rejecting the book of Esther as a legitimate book, as a part of the accepted canon of scripture. Mars further says, to make a long story short, with the king's permission, Esther overturned Haman's edict to kill all the Jews in its place she got the dumbed-down king to go along with Esther's revengeful, bloodthirsty scheme. Okay, he, he says that Esther's uh, heroism, what she did to humble herself and fast and risk her own life to save God's people, was actually a bloodthirsty uh, scheme. A bloodthirsty scheme and revengeful. Okay. Utter nonsense. I have to just, I mean, I, I am just, I was angered by Tex Mars' teaching on this. I'm zealous for the word of God. I'm jealous with a godly jealousy for the word of God. Okay, and if you're going to tell me, if you're going to reject an entire book of the Bible and call yourself a Christian, you're going to get rebuked and you should get rebuked. And if Tex Mars wants to come talk to me about this, we can have a, a talk. We can have a debate, you know, go to newcovenantbaptist.org and look me up. You know, we can do that. That's fine because I'll defend the word of God and you can appeal to your opinions or to his, you know, to history or to the Talmud and to Jewish rabbis, unsaved Jewish rabbis, which he does in his videos to back up his claims about Esther. Okay, so it's utter nonsense. Another quote from Mars, he says a, that all of this was a license for the Jews to slaughter anyone whom they saw fit to murder anywhere in the kingdom. Is that what the book of Esther says? You know, just, it's nonsense. It, it angers me. I'm sorry, but it angers me. Through this edict, a license to kill tens of thousands of men, women and even children, were monstrously put to death simply because a Jew gave the word. 
Is this not anti-Jewish? I think the racist here is Tex Mars, to be honest. You know, it's pretty clear. But we see that actually the book of Esther in verse chapter 4, verse 7 gives the real reason of what had happened. It says, And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him and, and of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them. It was Haman who wanted to utterly destroy and annihilate God's people. Okay, And he actually paid money into the treasury to do this. Haman was the villain of the book. Okay, that's the Christian interpretation. It always has been this new secret, hidden knowledge, Gnostic knowledge by Tex Mars is a lie and it's a, it's a satanic interpretation and you can't water that down. That's the truth. Uh, we see also that people actually got saved as a result of Esther's heroism and bravery. This is what Esther 8 says. People got saved as a result of her work, Esther 8, 17. And in every province and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. So people got saved as a result of what Esther had done. Okay, so to claim that the book of Esther doesn't belong in the Bible, to claim that Esther and Mordecai were the villains and that Haman was the victim and that they were racially motivated is a gross and utter, utter satanic lie from Tex Mars, who maybe he's a great guy otherwise, I don't know, you know, but, but in this, talking about in this, he's absolutely and utterly wrong.